So hello everybody and welcome back to another film. So this film is a little bit different than my normal uh, outdoor based film. The film is essentially an outdoor film but I, and I just feel like I want to start this one with a little explanation. So I've had some technical issues of late with sound. If you remember back to the film that I did on Iona where I was listening to a corn crack at the beginning you will have noticed some quite severe crackling. Now when I record my audio I generally record it on one of these which is a Zoom H1 recorder and they're brilliant little devices and with that you attach um, a lapel mic which is essentially, um, you'll have seen people wearing them, these little um, furry things and they, they clip onto your your, um, onto your garments that you're wearing and they usually do a great job but um, over the last few films I've noticed these crackles creeping in now and again and um, the reason as it turned out to be is that the wire inside as you can imagine with getting bent uh, started to fail so <laughs> I recently sent off for a brand new one and um, <clears throat> it, you get this and you also get um, a little lead that comes with it, an attachment because I didn't know which of the two was causing the problem I ordered both now, silly me went out on my last video with the new microphone all plugged in, I didn't test it and uh, as a result of that what I didn't realise is that the new microphone was also broke. So the only audio that I had, um, which is what happened on Iona, um, was the one that's recorded from this camera. That, that recording is often really quite good if there's any element of wind because there's no wind dampening effect on that microphone there's no essentially there's no furry cat as they call them dead cats on top the wind um, makes the, um, the the audio virtually um, just unlistenable you just can't it's, it's the, the wind is so loud that you can't hear the person talking so on this particular video I went out like I say I didn't realize that the recording wasn't working at all so I've had to fall back on this um, this little camera once again but I would say that 50% of the film has been ruined but the important parts, the two important parts where the images are taken I was in little hollows and there was no wind and I've managed to salvage um, the film from that so it's quite a short film um, but you just have to bear with occasionally there's some buffeting sounds but I feel it hasn't ruined the video on this occasion so I've put the video on now, I hope you enjoy it. Good evening everybody and welcome back to another film. So, glorious evening tonight and I've come back to the sand dunes. A little bit different to, for me this, uh, this evening, a bit of a challenge. Some of you may know that recently I had um, a hernia operation and it put me out of action and this is week four of my recovery. I'm still not really allowed to lift anything so I've slimmed my kit down as light as I can possibly go for tonight's, um, tonight's shoot. And I've literally brought my, my tripod which is in itself is heavy enough and the tiniest bag I can possibly find, I can possibly lay my hands on and uh, it's just got my camera in and uh, pretty much nothing else really, it's got uh, some filters, a remote release and some batteries and uh, a water bottle because it's quite hot but um, I have wondered when I've been walking to this point whether I'm taking on too much because it, it really is um, something I've got to be careful with but I've got this far I'm probably about 200 yards from the car and I think I'm in the area that I want to spend some time in so hopefully um, I, don't, I don't have to pack the film in and uh, assuming you see a bit more from this point on uh, it all went well so I'm going to have a wander around this general area I've come here tonight specifically because the dunes um, certainly in July um, the early part of July is better as a huge variety of, of botanical interest lots and lots of different wildflowers to, to you know to, to train the lens on and when I was deciding which lens to bring my only one lens um, for this evening of course I opted for my my favorite which is the macro lens because I thought that would give me the best chance of getting some shots tonight um, but this general area has got lots to go at the only thing typically with with this type, this type of habitat is that lots and lots of marrow grass so you get lots of straight lines running in the backgrounds everywhere so that's that's always the challenge when you come here is separating your subject from all this 
chaotic grasses that just are literally everywhere in this, this type of environment. So get the bag zipped up and um, it's that smaller bag. It wouldn't even shut. I won't even close where my filters are. So, but um, yeah, let's uh, get moving and see what um, what I can find. That took quite a while. I must have been at this for the best part of half an hour. This is a little plant called um, bird's foot trefoil and it's typically very very low growing and when I found it there's quite a lot of grasses over the top of it so I've moved those out of the way because I'm so close um, to the flower I'm having to focus stack at 5.6 I don't want to stop down because there's lots and lots of distractions that will come into play and I've done this before on the videos so 5.6 focusing on the very front edge of the flower and focusing right through and it's a stack of about seven but it's taken me so long the wind is relentless even though it's only very very calm it's it's having an effect on what generally happens I think the stack is something in the region of six or seven images and usually they get two-thirds of the way through the sequence and it starts to quiver it's, it's always the way with with plants that you're going to fight against uh, a bit of wind and it's one of the reasons why you're better doing them either very very early in the morning or very late in the evening as is the case here um, yeah so I'm actually on 800 ISO and shutter speed is 1 60th of a second um, and I've got the plant as I say it's very low to the ground but I'm shooting through this bit of vegetation at the front of the lens here just to create a nice soft base to the shots just so that the um, so that the plant can, uh, can grow out of this almost misty sea of green at the base so all being well if I have got it sharp throughout I'll put that on now Sneaking into position. So, Rosebear Willow Herb, not the easiest plant to photograph at all by a long stretch. So, this is not a typical um, sand dune specialist. It grows pretty much all over the place. It likes disturbed ground and um, its other name is fireweed. So, you do find it where there's been um, fires that have um, long gone and there's no no signs of them but yet the plant persists because of those conditions there's such a lot of it in the sand dunes it's hard to ignore it and I know it's always difficult to photograph and earlier on I was trying to do it um, backlit against uh, the setting sun but the contrast was just too high and one of the problems with Rose Bay Willow Herb and I'm not, I'm not trying to make excuses here is that I'll just show you this one here you never get a full flowering spike you always get the old um, sort of flowers that have set seed at the bottom and the new flowers at the top so you only get a little bit in the middle at any one time that's in flower so I've been trying to do something <coughs> a little bit artistic trying to work with the wind but that didn't work um, I, I thought a long shot of speed and getting the purples blowing but um, 
I'm sure it would work, but um, I just haven't got the time. I'm losing the light. It's going to be going to be midnight before I get this right. So what I've, I've opted for as a last resort, and I think it looks all right. I've taken a couple of shots, is to try and arrange the heads in nice um, groupings and um, and just grab my moment in between um, the wind blowing. So I've just sort of arranged the heads in a nice position in the frame and what I'm probably going to do I'm not 100% sure yet I might just take a little bit of a slither off the top and a little bit of a slither off the bottom I'll show you on the back of the camera on live view what I've got uh, I'm not sure this this will work let me see if I can brighten that up uh, difficult to see but um, I've focused on one two these two here quite sharp focus so they're the main focal points in the shot and then you've got the arrangements of the other flowers and, uh, and what I've tried to do is try to get portions of each plant at the different stages but yet shown within the frame so you've got the nice seed heads there you've got a full flowering head there um, top to, just showing the top and like I said the bottom of the flower there but what I think is, is quite a nice arrangement and um, that I think will look nice with a with a nice big mount around it and shown large. So uh, look at the light. I can change that to exposure. Uh, there we go. So oh dear me. Right. <laughs> Sorry about that. So all being well, I'll put that shot on now. Unless I get really lucky, this is probably going to be the last shot. But um, I'll see you when I've uh, when I've put that on. Once again, thank you all so much for watching this week's video. If you're not already a subscriber, don't forget to subscribe. And if you've enjoyed the video today, don't forget to give it a like. And also leave some comments below, let me know what you think of today's images. So until next time, bye for now.